Welcome to Colombia! Today we're hosted by Fatima Hostel and there are actually two in La Candelaria in the city center of Bogota and this one is more the party one or the one for the backpacker one with the bar and more dormitorios and if you're young, you're wild and you want to stay in the middle of La Candelaria this is the place to be. Today we're going to talk about where to travel in Colombia without seeing any other tourists. My name is Frank, I'm Swiss and I live in Colombia for over four years and I'm running a travel agency and we'll go right into the topic and I will tell you more about destinations, you will be mostly alone. From Bogota you can go up north until the town of Cocuy. And there you also have the Nevado del Cucuy, which is a big mountain on the peak you have snow. It's indigenous land, uh, so the mountain is currently only partly accessible. You cannot or only partly reach the snow and there are some trails which are open, which are cool, but there is not much tourism. And it's a very cold area and when you want to go there, you will drive many, many hours. I think the bus takes around 12 hours from Bogota, but it's great. And also other destinations in the department of Boyacá are Suizacón, which is also a small little town in the middle of nowhere. And in the night you see stars like you've never experienced before. And also what you can see, like 20 minutes from Susacón, you have the Canyon de Chicamoche, which is a, the Great Canyon of Colombia, which is usually been found in the department of Santander. But already in Susacón, you can go there. It's good for hiking, it's great for mountain biking, and it's just a very nice place with just Colombians, locals. Then in Boyacá, there is also a little town called Mongui. This town is part of the network of the heritage towns of Colombia and it's small, it's beautiful and worth a visit, touristically not too developed, also for national tourism. And great about Mongui is that you have a very famous parabo close by and you actually have tour guides on the central plaza which can take you there. Uh, the hotels are basic but sufficient. If you want to go somewhere where nobody else goes, Mongi is the place. Then we go up north, almost to the Caribbean coast, the department of Cesar. There you have the capital, which is called Valle du Par. And Valle du Par is very famous for its music festivals for Vallenato. All the inhabitants are crazy about Vallenato, which they play with the, how do you call that in English? Huh? Accordion. With the accordion. You play it with the accordion. It's a cool sound, you can dance. And I think most of the people who also traveled to Colombia in the past, they have no clue that Cesar and Valle du Bar actually exists. And the best thing about that department is you also have access to the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. But from the other side than from Santa Marta. You enter the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta through the back door and you have rivers and natural pools. It's just amazing. You have crystal clear water, indigenous taking care that there is no pollution and it's just paradise. And there is no tourism, not even national one. So if you want to go somewhere where is nobody else than the indigenous and you, there you need to go. Then let's go south of Bogota. It's very fast reachable from the capital. Um, we go to the department of Tolima. You can go up the mountain in Tolima. Actually, it's a connection road to the coffee triangle. And this is called Villa Hermosa, which is translated beautiful village. It's a cold area, you also have some paramo, you have a landscape that is spectacular and 
there you can buy heavy ponchos which warm you up a lot if the night is very cold. Also, in uh, Tolima, you can go to Ibagué. Um, from Tolima, there is also the main connection road to the coffee triangle, and that starts in Ibagué. It's a mountain pass, and it's very famous because there's lots of traffic and some accidents, and it's actually a terrible road to drive. Also with buses, because they drive like nuts. But in Ibagué itself, you can go to Restrepo, and this is in the valley, it's called Canyon del Combaima. This is the valley for Ibagué, and there it's perfect for bird watching, for hiking. Uh, you have access to the Nevado del Ruiz, which is also a big mountain with uh, snow. And also you can go to, which is very, very cool, Finca La Rivera. Um, you go up the mountain and then you have a funny couloir which crosses the canyon and there you have a finca, a restaurant, and there you have uh, some, some trails. You can walk and there are some activities. You also, have acc you also have accommodation available and it's just a cool place uh, where you can go. And tourism-wise, yeah, you have Colombian tourism on the weekends and on the public holidays, but foreigners, I don't think so. Then we go to the coffee triangle, to the department of Risaralda. And there's a beautiful space. Actually, the department of Risaralda connects to the Chocó and also the capital of the Chocó, which is called Quipto. Uh, but on one moment, the road is unpaved, uh, but so far you don't go. So in Risaralda, you don't stay in Pereira, but you go towards the Pacific and you go up the mountain and there is a town called Apia and you're, the, the whole flank of that mountain chain or hill chain they grow coffee and it's the landscape is gorgeous it's beautiful you see over the whole valley and they're growing coffee everywhere you have Apia which is beautiful uh, in terms of architecture you have a simple hotel uh, you can say there, there's not much luxury, there's not much of development of, of international tourism. They have, although in Apia, um, a bird congress once a year, but besides that, beautiful place, uh, just awesome, and no tourism. Great spot, very uh, secret and hidden gimmicks. Then we go to the department La Valle del Cauca. And the capital of that department is Cali, the capital of salsa. And in that region, you have fantastic nature. It's just amazing. It's gorgeous. I, I love that. I have friends there and I should them, and I actually should visit them soon. So you can go to Lago Calima, Lake of Calima, which is great for windsurfing, for kite surfing. I don't know how many days a year they have uh, constant wind. It's maybe 300 days. It's really great. Then you can go towards uh, Buenaventura uh, and halfway you find San Cipriano. And the interesting thing about that town is you can only access it by riding on a witch, Las Brujitas. And uh, no, it's not a real witch. Uh, they call those little carts they constructed to drive on the old railway. Uh, they call witches. And what they did, they converted motorcycles and some platforms with some little wheels to transport vehicles. And with those you can go to Cip San Cipriano, which is uh, lots of nature, you have rivers, you have uh, natural pools. It's a great spot for one, two, three days, relaxing in nature, swimming in the river. Very nice. Then also you can go to Buenaventura and from Buenaventura, which uh, is one of the important ports of Colombia, you can take the boats to different locations. I have to say Buenaventura, it's not recommended for tourism uh, because of safety. I was there several times, no issues to me, but just to tell you, it's uh, not recommended. But from as a starting point to go to different places, Buenaventura, Buenaventura is, is great. Access to the Pacific coast. 
Also, what I did uh, the last year, we took the old road from Buenaventura to Cali, and this is actually a very important road for bird watching. And we also offer that with our brand, uh, Sula. Then we have the department of Nariño, which I visited two months ago. And this is just a department so virgin. It's similar to Ecuador. You have volcanoes, you have Laguna de la Cocha, you have, uh, which is Laguna de la Cocha is a very big lake. It's very cold also, uh, but nature is just stunning. It's beautiful and tourism, that scale, so much tourism. It's wonderful, I love it. You can go to Ipiales, which is probably the most impressive cathedral I've ever seen in my life. I've been there the second time, and again, I was impressed because it's so beautiful. And also what you can do in Nariño, you can go to Tumaco, which is on the Pacific coast. And the interesting thing is, in Tumaco, there is no international tourism, but none, because it was known as a very dangerous place with many murders because of the whole coca growing. Today, there's so much army and police and security force, you cannot imagine. More security forces than inhabitants. We went there and it's great. You have great beach, great food. On the weekends, there's a party going on. And today, also Colombians on the weekends, they fly into Tumaco just to spend the weekend on the beach. And I'm pretty sure today it's a secret place going to, and in the future, if everything is a bit more balanced over there, it will be a very good destination to visit the Pacific Coast in Colombia. So that's it, uh, the secret and hidden places in Colombia to go and not to visit other foreigners traveling. I hope you liked that video. If you want more information, Subscribe the channel, hit the bell, write down something in the comment section if you have questions or you want to add information. Also, you will find more stuff in the comment section. I hope to see you again soon on my channel or even better here in Colombia. See you soon. All the best. Yours, Colombia Frank.